Tonight's special guest is the next Frankie Valley from the Four Seasons. His name is Bobby Fox. He's Irish, he's 26 years old, he's a great singer and a great dancer. And he has won the lead role as Frankie Valley in the Australian production of the stage musical The Jersey Boys. We welcome Bobby Fox as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. Bobby Fox. Hello. Welcome, welcome to The Beat Goes On. Thanks very much. What an honour to have Frankie Valley in the studio as well as Bobby Bob. 26 years old, you've got this huge responsibility. Mm. You're now going to be in Melbourne on the, 20, on the 4th of July and you are playing Frankie Valley and the Jersey Boys. That's right. Wow, what was the pathway to you becoming Frankie Valley? Uh, specifically for this show, I mean the audition started about, um, audition started about a year ago and they went for like eight months or something, ridiculous yeah. amount of time. So they'd come out and they'd they'd ask uh, they'd they'd see me sing and then they'd go okay well we'll see you for the next round and then they, then another person from the states comes over and then you know then they call out some more people then they it just keeps happening 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 right seven or eight times and then eventually um, you know all the time with scenes to learn and there might be a month or two months until the next one the next round and you forget everything that you've learned and you <laughs> relearn it and stress about it again and then eventually. Um, it got uh, boiled down and I had a really great feeling. I had a fantastic last couple of auditions. And then, um, then yeah, then th I got cast in the role and then I uh, couldn't tell anyone. I had to, oh. be, I had to keep it a secret. So th th then they took us to uh, Vegas to uh, meet Frankie. And I also worked in New York with uh, Bob Gordio, who's another one of the original Four Seasons, guy that wrote a lot of their hits. Um, and produced um, and yeah and then we so we met Frank and we did the launch over there and then we came uh, back we did the Melbourne launch tourism launch and then we uh, we've been sort of publicizing it ever since and then we start rehearsals at the end of this month how do you feel about it are you, are you looking forward to it yeah I'm really excited I mean I've, I've spoke I'm, I'm very good at speaking about it now I've spoken yeah. about it so much and I've just started reading the script and my role and sort of trying to get into the character and understand. I think a lot of the time for me, I just I need to just have empathy for the character. Yeah. You know, and once I sort of have an empathy or a compassion or a feeling of understanding, yeah. then the sort of role becomes itself. It's all written down and yeah. it's all beautifully written. Yeah. And they had a, they have they're very economic writers in a way. They that every word means something. something. You know, a line that will be said will further the story so sure. much. There's they, they, you know, they really called back, called back so much out of it, so that every, every moment is gripping. You know? It's really great, is it? talking about Broadway musicals uh, here earlier tonight and, and, and a tremendous musical. It's all about the four seasons. It's called Jersey Boys and it's like a runaway blockbuster hit. Paul has seen it and loves it. I have seen it twice I've seen it and twice. I'm going back for my third Going back time. for his third time. I can't say enough about this show. Now, how much of you heard all those wonderful songs from the Four Seasons. Yeah, Sherry, had you? Did you grow up hearing? I um, well, I knew them. I had heard them before, sort of thing. But um, I had, uh, yeah, I, I I knew of the Four Seasons, Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons. But I never made the connection of um, you know the songs with the band. And I think that's what happens with most people. They come and see the show and. They didn't realise how many of these songs they actually knew. Yeah. Now, what about the vocal gymnastics that you're going to have to go through? Let's have a look at Sherry for a kickoff. Uh, yeah. I even I'll give it a go. Sherry. Yeah, take it up a little bit higher. <laughs> take it, uh, Another third, maybe. Yeah. It's a lot higher. I'm and not going do, to do it today. What sort of a falsetto have you got? Well, I've, I've got the right falsetto. Wow. Let's say. And you were confident, you know, when you were being chosen for this role, you thought, well, one thing I've got is a great falsetto. Well, I knew that before I auditioned. Yes. So I auditioned and they, they tested my, my vocal range and they said, okay, well, you can sing the Frankie stuff here. Then they give me, you know, they test and see whether you can sing it. Okay, you can sing it. Then they give scenes and then dance as well. But the dancing side of things was never an issue because for me, because I'm predominant, like I started out as a dancer. So it's, um, so that sort of was sort of a walk in the park, let's say. Yeah. You know? 
you could have gone the way of, um, I mean, you, you've got the looks, you've got the ability to dance, you could have been a Robbie Williams, go go that sort of uh, Well, route. who says that I'm not? No, I'm going. <laughs> um, well, you know, everyone has their thing, and, you, you, you know, it's still one of those things. You Stage know, musicals? Are got, the, that's what I do now, and I've got, I've got you know, aspirations for later on. And But, you know, right now, I'm just so excited about tackling this part. Oh, yeah. Makes your heart jump. It's outstanding. A great, great show. It's hard not to um, get up and dance in the aisles or sing along. It's the best evening I've ever spent in the theater, ever. When I walk into this theater, I'm a 60-year-old grandmother, and when I leave, I'm 16 years old. How busy are you going to be promoting the Jersey Boys? Uh, I'm very busy at the moment. Uh, I'll get even busier once I start rehearsals, uh, which will be six, oh no, from 10 o'clock till six o'clock every day, six days a week. And uh, then we start, then we start taking the show, which is, you know, running each number bit by bit, putting all the lights in, yeah. you know, running it over and over and over again. And then we start previewing the show for two weeks. And then we finally open on July 4th. July 4th, yeah. July 4th. That's right, yeah. Burnout, you know, after your one hundredth performance, do you think, oh, if I have to do this again, or how, how do you structure your life so that you're still fresh every night? Well, there's a lot of things go, um, become involved, but the, the fresh thing, keeping fresh every night, is the job. That's the job aspect. That's the work aspect of it. The rest of it, it's called a play. You know, so you know, it's important when I teach kids and you know, aspiring actors or whatever or performers, I say, remember, it's called a play. So play with it, have yeah, fun, fun yeah. performing with it. it. It's very important. But the work aspect is the, you know, you, let's say the show's at eight. Like for me, I'll get there at six and I'll start warming up. So maybe I'll go, go and do a 20 minute run around the city and then get back in and stretch and then start doing vocal warm up and then uh, hydrate and steam. And then, um, then you get the hour call and then you do another uh, physical warm up on stage and there's also a vocal warm up as well for the rest of the company and then you go and you get ready and you put your makeup on you put your mic on you do wigs makeup hair blah 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 all that sort of <laughs> stuff right then you get into costume and you've got to not talk to people and keep your voice warm and and then you do the show and then afterwards you cool down you shower you take everything off you make sure everything's hung up you know that's the work aspect of it what about coming down at the end of the night? You do, you go up, don't you? It is a high, isn't it? Yeah, it is a high because, I mean, the, what's great, you know, let's say other jobs and stuff, you might do something and there's, there's not, it's the instant gratification that yeah. performers get used to. You do something and someone goes, yeah, instantly. Um, so, or if they don't, it's quite embarrassing. Um, but it's, it's just, you know, and I guess that's what you get addicted to. And then you do, you go up on a high, but it's also important, to, for, as I said, the cool down, the cool down, what you need to do, it's, you've got to shake it off. And that's why, like, performers, you know, they don't go to bed until 1, one thirty at night in the morning, you know? You're still and, up there, aren't you? Well, you are, you're up there, yeah. and you, unless you're really tired, of course, mm -hmm. then you're home by 11, 11.30. It's a lot, you know, and so you get up at whatever time, you know, 10 o'clock, you know, when most people have done half the day's work you're rising up and then the routine starts again. You know, you don't eat too much dairy or you try and stay away from dairy altogether and you might use the gym to keep yourself fit. You know, there's a lot of, there's a fitness aspect to this, to the, to the show, like, especially with Frankie because of so much singing, your lung capacity actually has to be quite big, you know? So I do a lot of running anyway and um, I'm generally try to keep myself quite fit, you know. Baby boomers. They are going to love the Jersey Boys. Mm. They're going to love it. Mm -hmm. How does it appeal to um, a younger age group?